go. Three, two, one. Look at that. If you see this message pop up on a modern turbo BMW, there's any number of places your problem could lie. It could be fuel related, turbo related, vacuum related, exhaust related. Seriously, the problems are endless. And if you own any of these cars for a lengthy amount of time, the probability of experiencing a limp mode is pretty high. Luckily, modern diagnostic tools make it really easy to pinpoint the problem so you can repair it. Our problem on this 335 is strangely enough in our emission system. Now, before I get too ahead of myself here for anyone new watching, the car we're working on today is a one owner near 200,000 mile free BMW 335. It was gifted to me by an amazing guy named Scott. He brought this car to the dealer to trade it in on a new one when they offered him a measly 1500 bucks. Mind you, he just spent a few thousand recently refurbishing it. He kept this car and offered it to me along with some words of wisdom. This car is your problem. <laughs> <laughs> you signed up for it, it's now your problem. I hope you make it on the journey. And if you don't, I'm gonna laugh when I watch the video. We took this twin turbo coupe and fixed all its relatively small problems in a DIY fashion and it was given a really good bill of health by my friend OJ, owner of Fluid Motor Union and a former BMW Master Tech. I'm telling you, man, I'm, I'm looking for problems. You know, I, I, I know that you want to make stuff interesting. This thing's solid. I'm, I'm really actually pretty impressed with this mileage. Like this is one of the higher mileage, uh, more put together cars that has come across. Now, if it had that oil leak the other day that was uh, causing it to misfire, that might be a different story. But the fact that you took care of that and there's really not too much else going on with it. Little stuff, uh, cosmetic stuff, stuff, but most of the stuff is something that, you know, a uh, DIY guy could handle, you know? This is this is, a, this is a nice find. When I finally got this car home, we upgraded it with some slick mods, and well, that's when we ran into a small problem, which ended up evolving into a bit of a larger one. What I think happened here is really strange. When we were installing an aftermarket exhaust, a few factory studs broke off, and that's a really common issue. Then those studs were pounded out with an air hammer so we could replace them. Now, I'm really still having a hard time believing this, but the jarring action of the air hammer ruined all four of this car's O2 sensors, as we had trouble codes and that limp mode pop up directly after the exhaust installation. And the only reason I came to this conclusion is because someone actually told me before we pounded these studs out that if I don't remove my O2 sensors, I'll damage them. I totally didn't believe them. I've never heard anything like this, but go figure, the second we hooked everything up, the car threw these trouble codes for all the O2 sensors. No big deal, right? Replacing O2 sensors on a 335i is a pretty straightforward job, but on a 335xi, which is the all-wheel drive model, and that's the one I have here, it's a totally different job. The transfer case and front subframe get in the way of everything. The right way to do this is to drop the entire subframe out of the car, which is a nightmare, especially on jack stands. But of course I don't do anything the right way, so we decided that if we cut the cats out of the car, it would give us just enough room to remove the rest of the pipes without having to drop the subframe, and maybe just enough room to install the new down pipes with the O2 sensors already in them. Seriously, the space we're dealing with here is really tight. You can hardly get a hand on an O2 sensor, let alone a wrench, and even if you could, they felt welded in place on this 186,000 mile BMW. If only repairing this BMW was as simple as making a factor meal, well, it would have been done in just a few minutes, like this amazing Southwest beef and ground rice, which was prepared by a gourmet chef using quality ingredients, each listed out clearly on the back of the package. Every factor meal is delivered fresh. They are never frozen, which makes them the perfect lunch or dinner option ready in just a couple minutes. For me, it's a great convenience and time saving, especially when it takes a little longer than I originally planned to delicately remove a catalytic converter. I've been eating factor meals all week and I'm super impressed by the variety that comes in one box. So I went on their website and they have a bunch of different meals to choose from when you join. And the portion sizes are excellent. Look at how many shrimp you get in the Peruvian shrimp bowl with red pepper cauliflower grits and roasted broccoli. Now hang with me, I've got a long URL to read here. You gotta head on over to go.factor75.com slash samcrack130 or just hit that link in the description and when you do, make sure you use code samcrack130 at checkout which will give you $130 off across six boxes. All right, I got my brain food. Let's try this one off the top. That's go.factor75.com slash samcrack130 to get $130 off across six boxes at Factor. Scott's words are very much resonating with me right about now. I had one goal in mind for this car. Everything was pretty well sorted. That was until I went to pull the hood latch. And you hear that? There's usually a little bit of a resistance and a pop when you pull a hood latch. 
Our hood latch is busted. I think it's busted from the inside of the car, but that means our hood is stuck shut. Now there's a couple different ways to break into your own hood uh, on the E90 platform, BMW cars. Some people talk about shoving a metal rod in between this gap here and that gap there because your hood latches are located like right here and uh, right here that you'll be fishing around for a long time. Uh, somebody showed shoving a wood board underneath here. I have no clue how they did that. They must have had half the hood popped up. Our hood is completely latched, locked shut. I think the smartest plan of attack is to take this wheel off, take the wheel liner off, and then we should be able to reach up and in, grab the hood cables that are located right here, and that should pop things open. Let's cross our fingers and hope that's the case. But our main plan of attack, our main goal here is to replace our O2 sensors and cap pipes. I'm gonna get underneath the car and see if we have good enough access to basically rip these things out. When we got in there, I felt clearly where the hood latch cables were. I tugged on them a bit. And I think what has happened is our hood latch cable has popped out of where they seat inside the latches themselves. So pulling on the cables, not doing anything at all. Uh, there was a lot of slack in them. So I think that we're going to have to go and attack them from inside here. That's really the only way I see us getting this hood open without literally taking a, a cutting wheel to the front here and cutting it open. So uh, fingers crossed, let's see if we can get in there. Had to put my purse down for a second, check this out. So there's two latches, like I said, one here, one here, this one is popped. And all I did was just get in here and really pull hard. You gotta put a lot of tension on it. So uh, I'm still unsure as to whether this side uh, cable is completely broken off on here or halfway there. I'm gonna pull a little while longer. And then the last method, especially since we probably got a little bit, see there's a little bit of a gap. We might be able to fish something in here and pop it manually. Now I initially spent at least a few hours trying to open this hood up. I used a scope, camera, flatheads, pry tools, you name it, and the one latch was stuck shut. My friend VTune popped over and gave it a shot and he couldn't get it. We decided to take a break and work on the underside of the car for the time being figured we'd eventually get it open. So in order to remove these, if you're following the uh, book route from BMW, you actually have to take the subframe out. The engine is uh, held in place by the subframe. So you're gonna hold the engine from up top and then hang it low to get in here. My plan is to get a Sawzall and just cut them out. Now our aftermarket ones are so much smaller they should slide in and a small set of hands should be able to get up top to where they are mounted in place. You can probably see right there it's going to eliminate this big chunk right here and uh, yeah once we cut from here I'm bolting that side's real simple. We got fresh fasteners there, got a V-band up there Let's start hacking. Ben, you made that way easier. Yeah, I usually made... cut catalytic converters off of new cars at the dealerships. So <laughs> you made it look way easier than <laughs> Look how it's empty. <laughs> There's nothing even in there. Look at these cats. No wonder this thing smells. We basically were catless already. <laughs> yep. Wow, look at that. It's double piped. Oh, look at You that. know, I was talking to somebody that does this job the right way, and they go, listen, we, we prefer much more to do this the right way because, you know, we want to save your parts even if you're not going to reuse them. These are toast. They're so gone. <laughs> All right, so... That was the uh, easy pipe to get to and it took a bit of work. I'm going to fish this in here. How does this look? Uh, this one's not going to be too hard either. We're just going to slice it right here somewhere. But every time we went back and messed with the hood, we got nowhere. This thing was as stuck as a stepmom in a dryer. I'd probably spent around three to four hours trying to get it open when I was totally done to the point where I'd rather go buy a used hood than spend any more time on it. I was so frustrated at this point, so I just parked it.
this little problem had a stuck for days. It's the reason why it just parked it here and let it sit. I was getting to the point where I wanted to take an angle grinder, cut the hood into a thousand tiny little pieces, sign those pieces, then sell them and raise enough money to take the 335 to the BMW dealership so they could figure out with it. But I thought there's got to be a better solution out there. I'm not going to figure this out by myself. I'm going to let someone else do it. That's when I asked Sage if he'd spend a couple hours with it. And guess what? Within probably around a couple hours, he got that hood pop. Now, I'd give that glory to Sage and bring him here on the camera, but he's got a hickey on his neck right now. And he totally told me he doesn't want to be on camera for the next few days. But don't worry, I'll get a close up of it at some point in this video. So just keep watching. But either way, we're going to get the 335 out of this field. We're going to get it on our fresh two post lift and we are going to make it great again. Starts right over, man. Perfect. Hey Sage, were you able to get this exhaust loaded a little bit so we can get that uh, extra room that we need? What do you mean? You know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Now considering how simple of a job this should be on the rear wheel drive cars, this one has not been so straightforward. So we've got the subframe loosened. We don't have the bolts out, but just loosened in all four corners. There's two in the back, two in the front, and then I could not get to the motor mount bolts from up top here. It was impossible. There's so much stuff in the way on both sides. So see those inverse torques right there? There's one on either side. I just loosen those so that whenever we jack the car up here, jack the engine up, I should say, well, it didn't put any stress on this motor mount and that's uh, fastener. So we've got that mount out. I think we're gonna try and get this pipe here first, which mounts to the section farther over. Once we get this settled, we get the V-band in place, we'll hook up the O2 sensors, and I'm hoping this job should be downhill. This is like a two hour job that turned into two days by the time we ran out. We got the exhaust gaskets, we got the hardware, but I'm so relieved it's done because this is what the car needed to be drivable again. We've got our new down pipes mounted, and well, all we gotta do is flash a tune to match this. We've got brand new O2 sensors, so that should get rid of our issues, and hopefully this car will boost and boost a whole lot more than it did stock. To make sure this didn't latch back down on us while we were in the middle of our repair, Sage went and he took the latches and he literally just dropped them in. Now they sit in this little frame right here. Already got that one pulled out. I'm going to try and pull this one out. We're going to replace this and the cable so that we don't have this problem for a very long time. All right, I snipped this section out. That's gone. Now we should be able to pull this through. That's done. Before we install this, let me show you quickly how it works. You see the catch right here? It goes down and it pushes right in the center right here and that pushes this down locks it in place and then that cable that we just attached on the other side when you pull it it unlocks it now let's see one of our used ones specifically the one that got stuck and see if this was uh, the culprit to our oh yeah look at this these are gone so the spring tension is completely gone and the lack of any grease here is just getting everything bound up so it's definitely a good idea that you replace these at the same time you replace your cable i right, just probably spent about 10 minutes adjusting everything because it was a little loose at first and it's really important we adjust everything so that we don't get stuck again so in order to test things we'll go ahead and instead of closing the actual hood in case we were to have an issue we'll go ahead and we'll lock both latches and this is all hooked up at this point. And a big thing that's important when you're running a hood cable is to make sure you run it in the clips. Usually there's clips or guides in a car. So this has an upper and a lower one, and this helps you get it tauter. If you just let it hang there, it's gonna have a lot of slack to it and it's eventually gonna mess up. And when I say eventually, probably really quick. But if we go, we pull this, let's see if we hear it. All right, did you hear it? I heard two of them pop. Let's see here. I'm not liking this 100% yet, but I can work on that. Let's see what we got. This one unlatched and this one also unlatched. All right, let me work on the main junction point here and then 
we'll get it set to be finished. So I've got this to the point where it will work for right now, but I'm gonna change a few things on it in the near future. A couple things for you guys at home, if you have any generation of BMW like this, the hood getting stuck on it is a very, very common issue. So go check your latches like we just did. Go ahead and just push them in. Make sure there's a bit of springiness to them. Shoot them with a little bit of silicone or rub some grease in there, it'll be really good. And then check your cable, leave the hood open and pull it from the interior. Make sure everything actuates. Now, here's what I'm gonna do differently. I'm gonna go order brand new OEM hood cables. The latches that I got are OEM latches. They've got the BMW stamp on it, but the cable I got is definitely a third party part and it just isn't the same, especially where it meets, where the junction is. On the factory part, even though mine was really worn out, there's a nice solid metal piece in that junction and it's not there on the aftermarket part. And that part comes in two separate pieces. I wasn't aware of that. I ordered one cable and I thought I was going to get the assembly. You get the piece that runs in the interior of the car and then you get the piece that runs to both the latches like we just replaced. So I'm going to order two new OEM cable pieces to make sure this thing stays good for the long run. sight to see a BMW with no check engine light on. Of course, we got a TPMS warning. That's typical on pretty much every single car I drive. I've got the access port open here to see how much we're boosting. Remember last time we made a few pounds of boost before it would fall flat on its face and I'll go right into that limp mode. So we'll get a little bit more heat into it and then we'll go wide open and see what this thing feels like. Let's give it a little baby pull here. Oh yeah. Darn, that's really, really fast. Way faster than I remember. Mind you, my old 335 was literally just a tune car. This car has pretty much full bolt-ons. Look, at one point we had 15.8 pounds of boost. It's amazing to think that these cars now, you can pick them up for five, six grand. And it's clearly why they're such a popular tuning platform. This video has been over a year in the making. That's how long that hood has been stuck for. And every time I had a friend over that was like a car guy, I said, come take a look at this because it bothered me so incredibly much. And you saw earlier on, we were working on jack stands. This is the first car we put on our new two post lift the second we got it. I've always wanted to get it going, but with the hood stuck, with the cap pipes the way they were and the very limited access. It was a combination of two very difficult tasks that were solved by A, having the right equipment and B, having the right people. So we gotta give a huge thanks to Sage for working his magic and getting it open. It's clear that Sage works all sorts of magic, even outside of here, but seriously, the other huge thanks we have to give is to the great Scott Bennett, the gentleman that gifted me this car. Scott is a really generous guy. He's a really smart guy and he's got a really interesting story and I went a little bit into it in the first video. If you haven't seen any of the videos in this series, I encourage you to check them out because I've had such great memories with this car and that's what will live on most importantly with the 335 is the memories that were provided because of how it all came together. Again, I'll drop a link to the playlist down below. You gotta check it out if you haven't already. Now, when Scott gave me this car, I told him, and I'm sure I mentioned it here at least once before, that when I'm done with it, we gotta do something charitable with it. And well, my time with it has come to an end. We pretty much finished every single thing we wanted to here, except for a good cleaning, and we gotta polish out those headlights. But very soon I'll be announcing what our plans are with the 335. I'll be doing so here on the YouTube community page and also on my Facebook and Instagram. All the links are down in the description box. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, well, just hit that button so you'll get that notification when I do post up what the plans with the 335i are. And of course, none of this would be possible without you guys. I wanna thank each and every one of you for watching today and I'll catch you very soon. <music>